Kat Boynton, and I'll be your host for the brand new series called Young Professional Actors. We did it, so can you. I'm a rising senior at Oxbridge Academy located in West Palm Beach, and I'm very passionate about musical theater. I study and train for a career in this art form every day, and I love it. So today, I'm very excited to welcome my friend, Casey Butler, to this program to talk about his incredible experiences in professional theater. So Casey and I know each other from a program called the Broadway Artist Intensive. It's a program that's actually held here at the Kravis Center during the month of July. So Casey, have you done any other programs here at the Kravis? Yeah, so I've done um, Arts Camp. I did that when I was eight or nine. I started doing that. Um, I was in the treble choir of the Young Singers of the Palm Beaches. Um, yeah, so I've, I've, I mean, I've pretty much grown up here, but I, uh, I, I was also involved in the in the Dream Awards here at the Kravis, um, but yeah, those those were the programs that I was in, and I started uh, the Broadway Artist Intensive. That then it was called uh, Broadway Artist Studio when I was ten. That's so cool. So you've been doing theater for obviously a very very long time. Yeah, a pretty long time. So what in particular made you think that you could have a professional career in this industry? Well, I think that that was. Um, that was pretty much due to the Broadway Artist Intensive. I mean, before then, it was just sort of like a fun thing to kind of do that I enjoyed. Um, but when I when I participated in that program, it it made me realize that I could you know pursue this as an actual career because I was seeing they were bringing in people that were doing it on Broadway currently, and you know all the faculty had been on Broadway, and you know everybody had made a living in this industry and in this business. So when I was there, uh, when I was about ten. I, I really kind of figured out and decided, hey, you know what, this is, this is more than just kind of like a fun hobby to do. I can actually pursue this as a career. Right. And then, then there's a the million dollar question of how did you end up on Broadway with a principal role at such a young age? So um, after I'd been doing the Broadway Artist Intensive for a couple years, I, I, the first year I went there, I started to get into dance and I started taking dance classes and stuff. Um, so a couple years after that, um, I, I was about 11 or 12, and I went up to New York and participated in an in intensive up there called the Broadway Artist Alliance. And at the end of it, they had a showcase where they, um, you know, industry people would come and managers and agents and casting agents and stuff like that. They would come and they would see the people uh, who had taken part of the program. And um, I was in the acting focus of the program, so I performed a monologue, and I was in um, a couple musical numbers, uh, dance numbers. And um, so yeah, after that I got a, I got a manager, I got an agent, um, and then from then on I kind of auditioned for about a year uh, until I uh, auditioned for Finding Neverland. Um, I originally auditioned, I auditioned for the original cast um, in ART in Harvard, um, but I didn't even get a callback for that one. And then um, a couple months later I auditioned for the, uh, to replace um, in the Broadway cast and got the call back and <laughs> the rest is history. And just to be clear, you have to be a member of the Actors Union to be on Broadway, right? Yeah, um, so you have to be part of the Actors Equity Association, AEA. Um, and it's, you know, it's a union. So uh, for the people watching, uh, you, get, you get certain rights, you get a uh, specific amount of times you're allowed to work based on contracts, based on pay, you get breaks. Right. Um, times a day you have to work certain, depending on the contracts, you get certain kinds of pay. Um, there's hazard pay for different things you're required to do on stage. Um, so yeah, they, they really kind of uh, make sure that you uh, are in a good working environment. Um, I'll, most of the theaters that you work for in the professional world will already ensure that, but uh, regardless, you know, whatever the case may be, they ensure that. So uh, when you're on Broadway um, and when you're in certain national tours, you get, uh, you get the equity contract where you get an equity card and become a union member. So I'm still a part of it, yeah. Right, so then you were 12 and in seventh grade when you, when you landed the part. I, I got the part the summer right after sixth grade. So like I, in the May, uh, like right after I ended sixth grade when I was 12. Okay, so you were a child actor. So what's the difference between being a child actor and then being an adult actor? So there's, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a harder job, but it's pretty hard. Because, um, I mean, you, when you're a kid, you have to balance two jobs with the show and school. 
I mean, you know, a major difference is when you're a kid, you don't have to worry about like taxes or paying bills and stuff like that. Um, but you have to, you know, you have to worry about that other obligation that you hold that's, you know, legal. Um, so, you know, whether it's homeschooling or things like that, you have to worry about that. And on Broadway, uh, when you're a child, you have, um, you have to have a child wrangler, which is someone that um, takes care of you. Uh, we had, um, we had a couple wranglers. Our main wrangler was Caroline O'Connor. She's done a whole bunch of shows, uh, and she's great. Um, so yeah, she took care of us, and you know, she made sure we were at the right place at the right time. We weren't missing entrances or anything, because backstage in a Broadway show, it's really cramped, and it can get really dangerous, because they're lifting all these stuff, and people are running back and forth. It's, it's almost like choreography of its own back there. Um, so you know, you know, she made sure that we were in the right place at the right time, and that we were all accounted for. We weren't setting the building on fire. And um, uh, so yeah, that's, that's, another, that's another major thing. Um, and you know, you're, you're treated like an adult. Um, you're a professional. You're there to do a job. And so, um, you know, you kind of have to grow up a little bit, but you can still you can still have a lot of fun. I mean, it's it's the theater. Yeah, it's of course. To play. Yeah. And so, as there were child actors, there were also, of course, you shared the stage with a lot of actors, the like adult actors, mm. with huge names. Yeah. So, who were the some of the people that you worked with? Uh, Kelsey Grammer, I worked with him um, a little bit. Uh, Matthew Morrison, I worked with him for a while from Glee. Um, he's great. Tony Yazbek replaced Matthew. He was um, he was phenomenal. Um, yeah, I got to work with Anthony Warlow, who's a huge star in Australia. But he was also um, Daddy Warbucks mm -hmm. over here in Annie. Um, Terrence Mann, I got to work with him. He's phenomenal. Melanie Moore and Amy Yakima from So You Think You Can Dance. Um, they they both played Peter Pan, and um, yeah, I, and. You know, the, the ensemble was phenomenal. Um, you know, they might not necessarily have been the biggest names. Right. Although Jessica Vosk, she's, uh, she's gotten to be pretty famous now <laughs> after Wicked and everything and uh, her online, but she was, she was in the ensemble in Neverland, and wow. she's, she's phenomenal. But yeah, the, the ensemble uh, was, you know, probably one of the strongest ensembles on Broadway at the time, if not the strongest. Right. I mean, everybody there was so ridiculously talented. Um, and have gone on to just do amazing things. So right. So did you when you joined the Finding Neverland cast? Did you know a lot of these people before joining, or like did you watch Glee? Or yeah, I didn't. I, I never really watched Glee. Actually, I never. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't really know. I knew I knew about Melanie more because right. of we watched. I watched So You Think You Could Dance with my mom, <laughs> and then when Amy Yakima came, um, Heather Heather Parcells came. Uh, and, and joined the cast, and she was a, uh, she's done a couple Broadway shows, and she was a part of the Broadway Artists Alliance. Okay. Um, cool. And so I met her, and then a, um, a friend of mine, Chris Richards. I knew him uh, before we were in the show together because uh, we were auditioning for like Matilda and stuff like that. So yeah, I knew I knew some people going in. I mean, I didn't really know the cast, and I knew of some people yeah. going in, but um, I really, you know, they were everybody really embraced me. Um, you know, as a new member of the family and everything, yeah. so I got to know everybody pretty quickly. That's so cool. Yeah, theater is just such a small world. Um, so you mentioned that that while you were up there and being a child actor, one of the main differences is you have to worry about school. Yeah. So when you were up there, not only are you professionally acting and being in a Broadway <laughs> show, but what did you what did you do for school? Did how was that experience for you? Yeah. So I went to I went to the professional children's school. Okay. Um, we're fortunate to get you know some great scholarship money to go there, um, and it was it, it was a phenomenal school to go to. Everybody there was a professional in something, so they had a um, a pretty relaxed um, schedule that was accommodating to whatever you were doing. Um, so there was a couple Broadway kids that were there, um, and it was it was it was a it was a great school, really small school. Um, but yeah, I went. I went there during the during my time when I was in Neverland, and I stayed there um, after I'd left the show f to finish up the year before I came back down here. Okay, that's so cool. Um, so when you were in Finding Neverland, <laughs> um, were there any opportunities that stemmed directly from that, like any other interviews or yeah. performance opportunities? Yeah, I mean, it <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of we got a lot of opportunities. I had an opportunity. Uh, to meet a lot of people, a lot of really cool people like David Blaine, the magician, and um, uh, Kristen Chenoweth. I met her a couple times, and uh, Laura Osnes came to see the show, and a lot of people that were just that came to see the show and wanted to see us after Julie Andrews. 
Um, so yeah, I got I got the opportunity to meet a lot of cool people, and I got a lot like the opportunity to perform in a lot of different places. Um, I got to perform at the White House. Wow. Um, for Broadway at the White House. Uh, that video is on YouTube if you guys want to check it out. <laughs> um, uh, and I got the I was able to perform at um, Broadway at Bryant Park with uh, a bunch of other casts, a bunch of other Broadway people. Um, I was able I performed at the Brooks Brothers flagship store. They, you know, gave me my own outfit and everything, and performed at uh, Grand Central Station. Perform all the, all these all over the place. Bryant yeah. Park, I mean uh, the Bronx Zoo, um, and it, but it was cool because they would have all the boys go together and perform. You know, sometimes it would just be by ourselves with not any adults. Sometimes it would be with adults, um, different numbers, but we would all typically kind of travel together and do performances together. Um, and so we, we were able to go all over the place and have those really cool experiences. Uh, yeah, we performed at um, Macy's. We performed at Toys R Us and got, a, you know, we were able to kind of pick out one kind of thing that we yeah. wanted to take home. Um, so yeah, it was, it, was a really cool, it was a really cool time. And we had a lot of really cool opportunities to, to do even extra performing and also time to kind of bond and, you know, get to be even closer as friends. So, so have you been able to work professionally since you moved back to South Florida? Yeah, I um, I was able to perform at the Maltz Jupiter Theater and uh, Palm Beach Drama Works a couple times. Um, I did Newsies and West Side Story at the Maltz, and I did um, Arcadia and On Golden Pond at Palm Beach Drama Works. And so I have I was able to, you know, being able to work there, I was able to kind of flesh out my resume a bit more, mm -hmm. um, get some get a you know more some more diversity in my. Uh, in my shows that I've done, um, I've done some straight, you know, at Drama Works, I've done, I did the straight plays, and at uh, the Maltz, I did the, the musicals and the dance musicals, and so I had, uh, I had the opportunity to work some, with some really great people, um, some great creative teams. So, and you actually work with your dad on on the acting side, right? Yeah, I work with my dad on acting about um, on some stuff, like some monologue work, with getting ready for some auditions or for college stuff. Because he was on Broadway, he right? He was on Broadway, yeah. Right, and his Broadway debut was at the same theater that your Broadway debut was. Yeah, at the Lunt Fontaine. He was in the Rothschilds. Um, and at the Lunt, they have, uh, they have a hallway with all the, uh, all the posters from all the shows. We called it the West Wing. So all the shows that are there uh, that have been at the, at the Lunt have had have posters in that hallway. So I was able to go see the Rothschild poster where That's he was so in. Cool. Yeah. So was that planned or? <laughs> no, nah, I mean it was. I I booked it. He booked it. It is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm sure it's helpful having parents that are just so supportive of everything you do. Yeah, I mean it's great. You know, because there there's there are some parents who are supportive, um, but they they don't necessarily um, know really what it takes or necessarily right. everything about it. Um, my dad, you know, he was on Broadway. He kind of did the whole thing. He really understands it. He teaches theater. Uh, my mom works here. She's the director of education here. Um, so I've kind of been surrounded by theater my whole life, and both of my parents really understand everything about the business, um, and they, they really understand how it works. So not only were they, you know, supportive of what I was doing, but they could really kind of guide me in the kind of right direction right. to go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so outside of theater, do you have any other hobbies, or is it just theater, theater, theater? Yeah, no, I'm. I do a lot of other stuff. I play video games. Um, I'm, I do martial arts. I do taekwondo, krav maga, jiu jitsu. Um, I played soccer for a little bit. Uh, I don't know, watch TV. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm pretty. I'm pretty normal. I play some instruments. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty normal. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I am. I mean, it's just beside the the thing. Okay, but <laughs> so, so what are you up to this summer? Literally nothing. Like I'm not doing anything. I'm just trying to take some ballet class and right. training. I mean, I am doing. I'm I'm getting ready for my college auditions. That's not nothing. Yeah, no, I'm getting ready for college auditions and self tapes, and I'm working with yeah. uh, Jason and Jackie mm -hmm. Gilman, who run the Broadway Artist Intensive, right. on my college uh, pre screens and auditions, and just kind of getting ready for that whole thing that's going to be coming up. Yes. Um, yeah, it's going to be. It's gonna be crazy, but uh, but yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of what I'm doing this summer. I mean, all my plans kind of got canceled, unfortunately. Yeah. But, uh, but um, but in terms of the future, what are your plans there? Do you want to go back to Broadway? I mean, most people 
don't even accomplish what you've already done yeah. by age 13. I mean, I, yeah, that's the goal. Um, you know, I'm going to go to college, try to get a degree, um, go back to New York, do yeah. that, you know, maybe try to, try to do some TV film work, uh, some Broadway stuff, you know, that's just try to make a living at it. You know, that's, that's yeah. really all you can hope for. You can't really hope for stardom. You kind of, if you're going in for that, you're going in for the wrong reasons. You want to do it because you have to do it. You, you love to do it. Um, cause it's, it's tough out there. It's a really competitive business, but it's, um, it's, it's, it's a great business if you love to do it. So yeah, go up to New York, try to get some regional work, Broadway work, TV, mm -hmm. film stuff, uh, just kind of try to figure it out. So do you have any, any advice for those who want to have a professional career in this industry? Just don't, don't take every rejection too hard because you're going to get more rejections than you're going to get acceptances. Right. Like I, you know, I was lucky to have gotten my Broadway show after auditioning for a year of TV, you know, sending in TV auditions, sending in movie auditions, going into Matilda and Sound of Music and School of Rock and all these different shows and tours and everything and just getting no after no after no. Um, you're going to get way more no's than you're going to get yeses. Um, but that shouldn't, you know, deter you because it's, it's never really going to be about you. All you can do is just go in prepared um, and control what you're able to control in the audition. Um, go in prepared, go in knowing your material, go in uh, being your best self. Don't be fake or anything like that. Just be your best self and just go in and um, be love what you're doing. Take it as another opportunity and don't don't let the rejections get to you because you're gonna. That's just a part of it. Well said. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here. I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. And hope to see or will see. Can't yeah. wait to see <laughs> what you're gonna do in the future. Thank you. Join us next time when we'll be talking to Alexa LaSanta from Jupiter, Florida, who appeared in the national tour of The Sound of Music. She did it, so can you.